Picture this, you have a strong, supportive, close relationship with your in-laws for years, but then after becoming parents, something shifts. All of a sudden, what once was a solid, supportive relationship, it starts to feel tense, strained, passive aggressive comments are made, boundaries are crossed, and then one day, it all boils over. You're left shaken, not sure how to move forward, and wondering how in the world did things change so quickly? Today, we're diving into this list story, we're going to unpack the roots of rigidity. We are going to talk about boundary setting, forgiveness. What does it even look like to move forward? We're going to try to understand how does someone go from like who you thought they were to something totally different, like showing their true colors and really how to navigate this very tough family situation. So I've been married to my husband for eight years and our relationship with his parents was just fine up until about a year ago when our son was born. Um, that's when, you know, they started testing and crossing boundaries and, um, and really picked up with the passive aggressive comments. But about three weeks ago, um, it got aggressive aggressive where my mother-in-law got into a disagreement with me um, over something my child ate, so a really stupid reason for an argument. And she ended up cursing, screaming at me, and then charging at me. And my husband had to step in front of her to stop her advancement. And we were both just kind of shocked. Just We'd never seen any behavior, like no indication of behavior like that, never seen that from her at all. And we were just confused by it. So we haven't talked to them since. And we don't know how to talk to them, really what to say. But a bigger question is, too, is I don't know how to forgive. And I don't really know what forgiveness looks like here. If forgiveness means reconciliation, if forgiveness means, you know, forgetting and and moving on and just trying to make peace, it's just a really confusing and awkward situation. So any advice would be appreciated. Oh my gosh. Like just hearing that, it's hard not to feel the weight of what she's been through. That kind of unexpected conflict from someone you trusted, it just, it shakes you to your core. And for her husband, if he's never witnessed that type of behavior from his mom, it's awful. I mean, it's very confusing for everybody. So it's a really big deal. And I want you, I want to normalize that it's completely normal to feel thrown off. Like you thought you knew your mother-in-law and now you're seeing her in a completely new light. So I really want you to give yourself permission to feel the shock, feel the sadness, feel the anger, the confusion. This is a huge shift to process. I want to be transparent. I completely blocked out that we went through something similar as a family. And when I listened to your voicemail, I was like, oh my God gosh. So we, we also experienced something with, you know, physical aggression. It was somebody, a family member, extended family member trying to force their way, like force entry into our home. It happened to my husband, but days after the event, it was like he was in complete shock. He just kept saying, and I was in the home when it happened, but for him to actually be the one like holding the door, um, he just kept saying, did that really happen? Like, I can't believe that happened. It seems like a nightmare. And really it was just, we were so discombobulated and in distress and denial and trying to really wrap our brains around, this is who we thought this person was. This is like the colors they showed, like what the heck is going on? So when I'm talking to you today, first of all, like I, I want you to know I'm coming from a place of knowing kind of what it's like, like being adjacent to someone that was, you know, pressed upon. And I also want you to know I'm coming from a place or I'm speaking from a place that we have healed. We have, you know, moved past it. I have forgiven and I'll talk about what that looked like for me. I guess I just wanted you to know that I relate to your situation and I'm not just trying to, you know, put myself in your shoes. Like I lived it and it definitely it shakes you up. I also want you to know that we are here to support you as a community. As soon as I got your voicemail, I made a video and posted it to our community because our Mind Your Boundary group is 
it's something else. They're very beautiful. The insights and perspectives, it really gets you thinking. And I just knew collaboratively we could come up with something really valuable in this podcast episode. And man, did they have really good insights. One very important insight from a Mind Your Boundary community member, she suggested that if this behavior from your mother-in-law is so out of character, it's possible that you look into signs of early dementia or other concerns like other health concerns. Another member added that a sudden behavioral change like this might mean that it's time for a neurological appointment. So this doesn't excuse the harmful behavior. I'm not trying to excuse it, but I am trying to help us consider underlying causes. And this can sometimes help us approach the situation with a little bit more compassion. So basically, before you even have the boundaries talk or even attempt to move forward, your husband needs to go talk to his mom, like himself, just him. Another thoughtful comment suggested that the boundaries talk really needs to be put on hold until after your husband goes, expresses his concern about his mom's well being. This could really shift the conversation from blame to concern. And with this softer approach, it might just really help this fragile situation. I was so focused on family dynamics and what I have experienced in these types of situations, like working with clients, that I completely missed the medical aspect. So really, that's what I would do first, is I would have my husband go, gently bring this up to his mom, and just make sure medically she's covered and taken care of. Now, let's dive into where my brain went to, which is patterns I've seen in other families. And this is going to help us understand how can somebody that, you know, like your mother-in-law, you knew her as this, all of a sudden show up as this, like a sudden change of behavior. This kind of shift often comes from a place of emotional rigidity, and it can lie dormant until a really charged topic like parenting brings it out. So emotional rigidity is kind of like running into a wall. It's a wall built on beliefs like my way is the best way, my way is the only way, I'm, I'm right, you're wrong. And when you do something different, especially when it comes to parenting, it can feel like you're just taking a chisel and you're chipping away at their identity. So this brings up a great point from another MYB member. She suggested that it might really help you in your moving on process to understand your mother-in-law's perspective. Like there could be something deeper going on here, something that's triggering this extreme response. So maybe there's like an old hurt or a past trauma resurfacing and she's not even fully aware of it, but it's making her defensive and flexible. So really getting to like the root of what caused her to respond so strongly could really be valuable in terms of you moving forward in this relationship. When I say emotional rigidity, for some people, it's like, it's kind of like a stubborn young child or even a preteen when they're just black and white, concrete thinking. They cannot, you know, waver. They, they can't move into the gray. They're convinced they know what's best. So when they're challenged, they're defensive. It's frustrating. And sometimes they get really, really angry. They can't see that the way you're doing things is equally valid because to them, it threatens like their legacy or even it could suggest to them like, well, if they're doing it this way, my way might've been wrong and that means I'm not a good parent. So this emotional rigidity, it often creates conflict out of nowhere. Why is it that some parents get triggered and some parents don't? Well, parenting is one of those things that for many people, it's like our identity. It's the core of who they are. So when you see your in-law reacting very strongly to your choices, they're not necessarily criticizing you. Often it's more like they're feeling like, Okay, so if you do it differently, what does that say about me? It can feel like they're rejecting your values even if that's not what they're intending. Or think about it this way. What if your mother-in-law's identity was completely wrapped up in being a mom? Like that's what she's most proud of. And now that you guys are not seeing eye to eye on so many things, not only is her place like in her son's life shrinking and she's becoming more and more irrelevant, now she's starting to question who was I as a mom? And she's starting to question the belief she held onto so tightly that like, I'm a great mom. 
What if that's not even true? So I'm not blaming you. I'm just trying to provide some understanding and some insight as to why some parents really struggle during this time. And it can feel like you're threatening their legacy, you're threatening their identity, and you're also taking away their relevance. So again, just providing some understanding of what could be going on for this mother-in-law because it's so out of character. And I really like to understand the why behind behaviors. And again, we all know it, but I like to repeat it. Everyone's welcome here, mother-in-laws and daughter-in-laws. This is a safe space. Before we move on to forgiveness, if you're getting any value out of this video, make sure you hit that subscribe button. That way, the next time I release an episode, you don't miss it. Okay, let's move on to her question. What does forgiveness look like? Is it forgetting? Is it reconciliation? How do, how do you even move forward from this? One community member emphasized that you can forgive somebody without necessarily allowing full access back into your life. So forgiveness often, I find, is misunderstood. It's not about excusing or erasing what happened. You will never forget what happened. It's about letting go of the anger so that it doesn't consume your life. Forgiveness for you is about finding peace again so that you can move forward without carrying that heavy weight of the event every day. Another Mind Your Boundary member echoed the same sentiment. She shares something so insightful. She said that forgiveness is a gift. It's a gift you give yourself. It doesn't require interaction with the person who hurt you, you can forgive somebody without accepting their behavior or allowing them back into your life the same way. Reconciliation, however, is a choice and it requires both parties to be willing to rebuild trust. And we'll get to that in just a moment. A YouTube subscriber noted that forgiveness and reconciliation are separate. Forgiveness is a decision for the daughter-in-law and the son to make for their own peace while reconciliation, that's gonna require the mother-in-law to fully acknowledge, like, this is what I did, so she accepts her behavior, acknowledges it, and she apologizes. And if this behavior is new, it's crucial that she like does the work. She gets either medically evaluated, she talks to a therapist, whatever, she figures out like what's going on here so that she can prevent it from happening in the future. Hopefully that clears up what forgiveness looks like. It's an action you take for yourself. And when you choose to forgive somebody, you are not forgetting what they did. You are simply not allowing the heaviness of the event to weigh you down daily. So how do you even process your feelings and know when you're ready to forgive? Here are some things that I like to do, some just practical tools that help me work up to the point where I'm like, oh yeah, Okay, I'm ready to forgive. So I like to journal and I'm not a daily journaler. I just know the profound power of pen to paper. It's extremely therapeutic. So I would write out and process my feelings on paper. I would talk about all my emotions, my anger, my confusion, my shock. Um, I would just, I would write it all out. I would talk about my fears going forward, my uneasiness, all of it, just, just, get it out so it's not just bottled up inside and bouncing around in your head. If you're not a writer, that's okay. Sometimes it's helpful just to talk to a trusted friend or a neutral third party or a therapist. They can guide you through this process and offer a lot of tools that help you cope and arrive at some resolution. Finally, I like to think about forgiveness as like an internal boundary. So when thoughts about the incident come up, I gently remind myself, I'm choosing to let this go for my own peace. This over time keeps the incident from intruding on my daily happiness. As Randy pointed out, forgiveness doesn't mean that you forget what happened and you continue the relationship as it was. Instead, it's about letting go of the grudges and setting boundaries to protect yourself and reduce the risk of this happening in the future. Now let's talk about practical boundaries. Moving forward, I want you to think about what boundaries do I need to feel safe? So to keep my family safe, physically, mentally, all of that, what would, I, what would that even look like? So sit down with your husband and just talk it through. I want to preface that we are simply talking about what the relationship would need to look like going forward for you to re-engage. We haven't even talked to your mother-in-law at this point yet, so I want to make that clear. So even though we're talking about boundaries, I'm doing this assuming that you haven't even had the big meeting yet, and I'll get to that. We're simply just brainstorming what would make me feel safe what would work for our family also to note is that the boundaries you set today will probably loosen and evolve as trust is rebuilt like hopefully that's the case for example in the beginning you might only want to meet in public areas for short durations of time and as time moves on and trust is rebuilt that obviously can evolve but again 
This is a big if, because we don't even know if your mother-in-law is willing to take accountability at this point and own her part and do the work to prevent this from happening in the future. One community member recommends that you keep interactions brief and focused. So if and when you do decide to reconnect, keep it in locations where tensions are low. Don't talk about like contentious topics. I would keep it brief and just just have it be a slow reintroduction. M recommends keeping visits to the bare minimum initially until you've clearly defined the parenting role. So only allow interactions in ways that make you feel safe and structured, ensuring that everyone understands this is acceptable, this is absolutely unacceptable. This way, you are maintaining a sense of control over the relationship dynamics while allowing space for you know, cautious reconnection. Once you know, like, okay, this is what my boundaries look like, this is how I'll be able to re-engage, and after your husband has encouraged his mom to go talk to a doctor to make sure nothing more serious is going on, you may find yourself ready to meet as a family and discuss what happened. Make sure this space feels safe. For the first meeting, I would make it in a public space and obviously make sure your husband is there. And if emotions are still running high, a family therapist can provide a great experience, help navigate the conversation, make sure everybody feels seen, heard, and understood, and really get into like the nitty gritty of what's going on. A member shared the idea of family therapy as a way to help unpack the complex emotions and really address what's, what's going on at a deeper level. So sometimes a neutral third party can mediate, making sure that everyone is, you know, seen, heard, and understood, but it really makes the conversation productive. I highly recommend my episode that I did. I'll link it in the description below. It's it's, it's about preparing for the first big meeting. So it's after you take a break, now you're gonna come together and it's it's for both of you. It's for you guys, to you and your husband to watch, but also your in-laws as well. And if you're open to it, short-term family therapy can really help everybody heal. It's the one regret that I have that you know my husband and I and his parents didn't do after our estrangement. So again, forgiveness, it's a personal journey and it's okay to take your time. Remember, forgiving somebody doesn't mean you're saying like, what you did is a-okay. It means you're choosing peace over resentment. And as for reconciliation, that's a slow process. You're rebuilding trust there. It takes your mother-in-law and you take it one step at a time, setting your boundaries that make you feel safe and respected. As Nancy beautifully said, forgiveness doesn't mean you're excusing their behavior, but it does protect you and your peace. For anyone out there in a similar situation, please know that it is okay to protect your peace. It's okay to set boundaries and it is okay to forgive give at your own pace. Thank you so much for leaving us this voicemail. Thank you so much for joining me today. Thank you so much, not only for joining me today as we talk through this, thank you for leaving your comments. I mean, if you scroll through the comments on Instagram, uh, TikTok, and, and YouTube, you'll just see, like, especially Instagram, you just go pages and pages and pages. It is amazing how much time people took to really put out just thoughtful perspectives and just wise nuggets of information. So definitely, if you have a moment, take some time to read some of those ideas, especially if you're in a situation like this. And remember, friend, make sure you keep minding your boundaries.